IT, forging IT security experts. Secure Ninja. Hey there, I'm Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV and I am here in Budapest, Hungary at Hacktivity 2012. It is the largest IT security festival in Central and Eastern Europe. And right now, I'm about to speak with Vivek Ramachandran. He is a Wi-Fi researcher, entrepreneur, and book author. Vivek, how are you today? Fantastic, and thank you very much for inviting me to Secure Ninja TV. Definitely, thank you thank so you. much for speaking with us. Okay. Um, and you are about to actually, after you speak with us, you're about yes. to go speak here at Hacktivity. Yes. What are you going to be talking about? Okay, so I've actually been a Wi-Fi security evangelist for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. And today's talk is about all the bleeding edge techniques to crack Wi-Fi in the enterprise, which is all the PEEP, EAP, TTLS and all that. And from what I've seen, nobody really talks about all this advanced stuff in Wi-Fi security. Mm -hmm. And this is where this is more of a knowledge series to educate the audience that, hey, Wi-Fi hacking is not web cracking. It's way beyond that. And that's what the talk is about. Wow, that sounds important. Wi-Fi is definitely something we all yes. use. Yes. Um, so what are some of the vulnerabilities you've found in Wi-Fi over the okay. years? So I've been into Wi-Fi security and you know vulnerability testing for probably the last seven years. Uh, started off by cracking an encryption schema called web cloaking at DEF CON 15. Found my Wi-Fi attack called Cafe Latte, which was just after that uh, presented that at TourCon San Diego. Uh, since then, I've also talked about how malware can use Wi-Fi and infect machines and you know probably create a little botnet which only uses Wi-Fi for propagation. Uh, this is most of what I've done uh, in wireless and of course you know uh, new stuff keeps coming out every day so there's never an end to you know research and what you can do with the subject. Right, staying on top of it. Yes. And you have read this book. Yes. Tell us about it. Backtrack five wireless penetration yes. testing. So uh, the reason this book was actually written is there were tons of books before this. Mm -hmm. However, very few of them really concentrated on the practical aspects of pen testing Wi-Fi in a methodical way. Okay. And this is exactly what the book does. I'm happy to say over the last one year since its release, it sold 8,000 copies. Wow. Yeah, and it's kind of fun to meet uh, people who bought the book in conferences and have you kind of sign it and all of that. So something new and different. Very uh, cool. And a little shameless plug, you can buy the book. Hopefully, you know, the audience at Secure Ninja TV would like it as well. Absolutely. Um, have, have you signed many copies for the attendees here? Yeah, uh, not for attendees here, but I've done it at Black Hat and DEF CON and a bunch of places. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Very good. Planning to give out two of these books uh, probably as a little Q&A during the actual talk. Oh, nice. So we'll see who gets it. Yeah, definitely. Um, now you're also an entrepreneur and you've got a website. Tell us about that. Okay. So securitytube.net started in 2007 and the real need at that time was there was absolutely no free website which would teach people infosec training mm -hmm. absolutely free of charge. And this really started, uh, you know, from getting inspired by my own grandmother. So yeah, in a little suburb in India, she used to teach all these poor kids for free. And at that time, I couldn't really understand, right? We had a small little place, all the kids are always in, and I used to ask my grandma, hey, you know, you could probably just charge money for all of this, right? And what she said is, hey, if someone is not ready to help people who can't afford, where are they going to go? Right. And this was something which probably was kind of the laying foundation stone for security tube. Mm -hmm. And between 2007 till 2012 right now, I've given out over 150 hours of video lectures free of charge to the community. Now, unfortunately, as much as I would have loved to do that forever, right? Mm -hmm. I got married, you know, I have bills to pay and all of that. And this is where what I decided was to also go ahead and have paid courses for professionals who can afford and probably, you know, who are looking a little bit more than the common hobbyist mm -hmm. on the same subject. And this is where we started with security tube certifications around September of last year. And I'm happy to say over the past one year, now we have students from over 65 countries around the world and growing. Uh, and to be honest, when I started, of course, you're always afraid, as, as you guys can clearly see, you know, I have a very heavy accent. So when you talk about internationalization of anything, you're always worried, hey, is he, you know, people are going to figure me out? Am I easy to understand and all of that? Uh, 
But the way the community reacted by actually purchasing all of those courses blew me away. Yeah. In this conference, I've already met five people, and this happens every place I go, and they're like, we bought your online course. Thank you so much. It helps such a lot. So that's how I made the transition from the free security tube.net, which still is free today, mm -hmm. to also providing the online training and courses, which we do with security tube training. Very cool. Now, you yeah. described it best, I think. You said it was like a YouTube for hackers. Yes. Security. How exactly does it work? Just the people upload the videos that they... So, what happened is in any community effort, if you just put up a website and say, hey, you know, upload all your stuff, nobody's going to do it. Right. And this is where I seeded the website uh, with over 60 hours of quality videos before I saw the very first submission. This was way back in 2008. Okay. Once people saw others contributing, right? They started posting their videos as well. So what we do now is you can link your existing videos from YouTube or Vimeo mm -hmm. onto our website. And this goes in front of an audience of 150,000 unique visitors. At last count, I think we had over 200 countries every month. Right. Uh, so that's how, I mean, it started with just me putting videos, people adding on their videos. Yeah. And uh, now we see over six to eight submissions a day. Oh, excellent. Yeah, stuff to moderate, but we try to do a good job there. And it all has to do with IT security, a bunch of different kind absolutely. of topics within absolutely. that? Uh, absolutely to do with practical application of security. I mean, we do not have any management level courses in IT security, which mm -hmm. is how you manage security and all of that, as much as we would love to. Right now, it's how do you pen test, how do you hack, how do you research, how do you break stuff? So most of the stuff is how do you break security? That's what those videos are about. Right. Breaking it is the way to learn exactly. to secure it. Exactly, because only if you know how to break stuff mm -hmm. would you figure out how to protect it in turn. Right. Right, because that's the way you can probably think about all those little moves yeah. that hackers can do. It's like a game of chess. Yes, absolutely. And that's the idea behind the Certified Ethical Hacker course. Right. To, uh, to catch a thief, you must think like a thief. <laughs> True. Definitely. <laughs> but of course, there's also the temptation to become the thief. Yes, and hopefully <laughs> that doesn't happen. Now, one of the things no, that... No, just kidding. Yeah, okay. yeah right? <laughs> well, <laughs> learners, there are some, uh, some bad people out there that, that use the tools for evil. And one of the things we actually ask a lot of the interviewees that we speak to is, um, you know, when you're sharing this information about the Wi-Fi vulnerabilities and everything, how do you know that the people learning are going to go out there? True, true. So it's, it's, it's really difficult. And, and I, what I really think is sometimes it's also a matter of perspective. Mm -hmm. In the sense, the same man who probably goes and kills beyond enemy lines is a hero in his own country, mm -hmm. but a murderer in the other country. Mm -hmm. The same knife can be used to cut an apple or to kill a man. So in reality, every information can be put to good and bad use. Frankly, you could take your own fingers, stick it up that little electricity you know, socket and die in a second, right. while the same electricity powers everything in the world. Right. So what I figured out is if you're too worried about misuse, all the great good use with all of that can be put into uh, is, is something you may forget. And if that happens, civilization can't really progress. I mean, at a very high level, uh, I think this dilemma about what to release and whether it's good or bad is kind of percolates through, I mean, practically everything we do. Right. Right. It's like the atom bomb can probably be used to, you know, annihilate a city, mm -hmm. or the same stuff can be used to power, uh, you know, create free energy and all of that stuff as well. Right. It's like so. guns don't kill people, people kill people. Exactly. Now on securitytube.net, um, is the content curated or can anyone just post anything? Right, right. It's a very good question because when you start a community site, mm -hmm. everyone expects that, hey, it's the community who's in charge, right? Mm -hmm. We should be able to post what we like. We should be able to write what we want. The problem really is, however, to create a quality website where people want to go and spend their time, you would need to moderate and curate. There are multiple reasons. One is, of course, you have the regular spammers, right, who want to spam their products and services, and we've seen a ton of them. The second case is having the same set of videos being kind of reposted over and over again. Mm -hmm. Same problem you find on YouTube, right? You search for a Michael Jackson video, you end up with a thousand hits. Which one has the high quality definition, which has the best music, you really don't know. You end up wasting a lot of time. That's the exact thing we wanted to avoid on Security Tube as we were scaling. Uh, and this is where now we have a team of moderators who are actually community members who we've trusted over the years. And whenever someone posts a new video, 
there's a little email which goes to all of us on that list. Mm -hmm. And we basically decide, hey, is this good enough to go on the site? Because people trust Security Tube to give them the best possible free education alternative. Mm -hmm. And this is where our number one philosophy is we don't want to waste anyone's time. Right. We really don't want a user clicking play and saying, man, this is the same garbage I can find on YouTube. Right, because that happens right. on YouTube all the time. Exactly. You're like, why am I watching this? <laughs> so that's good, you keep it quality. Yes. Yes. Um, now you said you get about six to eight submissions a day. How yes. many of those do you accept? Uh, we accept around two to three submissions out of that. Okay. Because what we also see is unfortunately a lot of plagiarism, which is mm. people reposting videos of other authors who've already probably either posted on Security Tube or who we know personally. Mm -hmm. So when that happens, typically we contact that author and say, hey, someone is posting your video. You know, do you want to post under your own name or is this okay? Right. right? That's one thing we take care of. Uh, and of course, the second is, you know, ensuring that all the bad stuff goes off. And typically, acceptance rate is 30%, 30 to 40%. Interesting. And my background is more in marketing than uh, tech stuff, but I'm always trying to learn as much as I can okay. about technology okay. and information. So I think I might go to the site and watch Thank some you. of the videos. Thank you. And, and, and this is where I think because of the curation, within the last three years, now we have over 22,000 followers on Twitter, yeah. uh, over 15,000 Facebook fans, and growing. Uh, and over 20,000 registered users on the site itself. Excellent. And I think the real reason behind it is we ensure, as I said, I mean, what I really, when I decide on a video, my key take is would I enjoy watching it myself? Mm -hmm. Would the mods enjoy watching it themselves? Yeah. If the answer is a resounding yes, that's when we approve it. Okay. Else we say, hey, no. Very cool. Thank you. Maybe hopefully some of your fans will will come over and like Secure Ninja too. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> You've I'm got sure. a lot more than us, which is awesome. Well, well, you could just you know tweet and CC Security to you on Twitter, and yeah. we'd be happy to kind of you know help yeah. you announce whatever you have. Yeah, awesome, sure. help each other out. Absolutely. Thank you so much for speaking with us. It was definitely a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Um, and like I say, make sure you like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, so you don't miss anything, and definitely watch all of our videos at YouTube.com/slash Secure Ninja. I'm Alicia Webb. Secure Ninja Shorts are brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in information security and IT training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. SecureNinja.com, forging IT security experts.